digital watches in space? Super retro digitals from a population obsessed with ZS Spectrum clones? Chronographs in space? Unique designs? Geiger counter in a watch? I give you Soviet watches of both the mechanical and electronic variety, which is the topic of today's video. So do like and subscribe if you enjoy. Let's explore some watches from the pre-Soviet era. So an early example of Russian watchmaking is Mikhail Bronikov, who is making wooden and ivory pocket watches in the 1860s. Brands with significant Russian roots are Biura, founded by Pavel Biura, who's been described as a Russian businessman of German descent, with the main premise being in Switzerland, but there was indeed a Russian production facility, which is one of the oldest in Europe. Moser C is another brand with significant Russian roots, as I believe Heinrich Moser started the company in St. Petersburg, with their movements apparently being used in Fabergé, jewels to the Sars, in their table clocks. Heinrich Kahn was another watchmaker that made many presentation watches for the Imperial Army, and another so-called Swiss-Russian brand is Gabus, William Gabus being Swiss, but he was distributing his watches within Russia. Relatively quickly after its founding in Switzerland in 1853, Charles Emil Tiso was peddling Tiso pocket watches around the Russian Empire from at least 1858, so they were another big distributor. Now let's turn to consider the emergence of Soviet watchmaking. So the big event that put a stop to pretty much all of the prior activity I was talking about, bar a few marine chronometers and table clocks for the Great War, was of course the October Revolution in 1917 of Vladimir Lenin and the Bolsheviks, which was a trigger for the Civil War and the later establishment of the Soviet Union in 1922. The pre-existing watchmaking and retail premises would be brought under the control of the State Trust of Precision Mechanics, administered by Gostrest Tokmek, from 1922, which was a precursor to the state watch factories. It was only Heinrich Kahn that would stay of the previous watchmakers and would continue to play a role. Now in 1923, the Soviets were close to sealing a deal with some of the major brands, including Moser, Nardan, Doxa, Tiso, Omega, Longines, and Zenith, but this was bailed on after the Soviets boycotted Swiss watches due to them acquitting an individual that assassinated the Soviet ambassador to Italy. Now after Lenin's death in 1924, Joseph Stalin would become the new leader, and as part of his big push towards rapid industrialization, there was a decree in 1927 stating that the Soviet Union needed to become self-sufficient in the production of watches rather than relying on imports. Wolf Pruss had spent a long time in Switzerland learning the art of watchmaking and he got the original green light for his plan to build up the Soviet capability over time with proper education of watchmakers, being assembled initially through imported parts and later acquiring equipment over time. Now the Soviet Union had been scouting around the US for an opportunity to get into watchmaking know-how and around the time just before the Great Depression would start to sink in, their buying agents Amtorg came across Juba Hampton which was a watchmaking company in Canton, Ohio, with 23 of their watchmakers going over to Moscow, upskilling their USSR counterparts. The other factory acquired was the Ansonia Clock Co., and as well as these US workers, there were some watchmakers from Glasuta and Ruler in Germany that also moved over, with the gear being transported in 1930. In this same year, work started on the first state watch factory, Trust of Precision Mechanics, in an old tobacco factory in Moscow, abbreviated in English to 1GCHZ, which would start producing a small number of pocket watches for largely ceremonial purposes. Now the first watches that would be based on the Hampton watches were called the K43 or Type 1, later being called Kurovskis after Sergei Kirov, a prominent political figure. From 1936, things kicked off much more when the more modern movements from LIP, the French watch company, which I've done a whole other video about, was secured as part of a deal reached with Fred Lip, uh, which was an ongoing technology sharing relationship for quite some time. The watches based on Lip T18 would be branded as Fesda or Star. R26 was involved in the Pobeda, which means victory, as well as some watches of Salyut using the R36. It's likely the relationship continued as the 1965 Polyot is very similar to the Lip R25 movement with the T-15 being very similar to the Slava. 
Now in 1935, a second Moscow State Watch factory was established at the premise of the Moscow Electromechanical Plant. It started off with Type 1s, uh, but would later transition onto the lip-based watches, branded as Slava, which means glory. Now during the war, due to the risk of the encroaching German forces, the first State Watch factory was moved to Zlataust, behind the Ural Mountains. Now it originally kept making the same branding as the old Kirovs, but by at least 1951 would have its own 343 Zlataust mark. Now it's this factory that would start to make Agat stopwatches, which is a brand still available today. Similarly, the second State Watch factory was relieved with its move to near Chistopol factory 835. It's this factory that would produce a lot of the military watches of the time and would later be branded as Vostok, one of the brands I guess that you will have heard of. Now following the war as part of reparations, the USSR seized a lot of the German watchmaking machinery with the Glasuta watchmakers in Soviet-administered Saxony being lumped together into the VEB and handed back over to the GDR in East Germany, as I discuss in my video on the topic of German digital watch history. One of the fruits of this was the Tutema chronograph with the equipment being used to make the Europa 59, which was issued to Russian pilots, later superseded by the Strela, which was used in space. I'll be pivoting more towards the electronic and digital watches later, but to give you a flavour of the variety of Soviet and Russian watch brands from over the years, here's a list of some of the brands associated with different factories, with some such as Pobeda being made at multiple places, so I've just included them once for brevity. Now the first Moscow watch factory had Polyot, a particularly fun one being the 3133 chronograph based on the Valju 7734 purchased from the Swiss in the 70s. Now this went to space too and was used by fighter pilots. Pobeda, a name meaning victory, which was chosen by Stalin himself, was made across the USSR, but the first Moscow was obviously a key side with some fun examples on screen. Strela, which includes the famous 3017 chronograph worn by Alexei Leonov on the first spacewalk on the mission Vokshod 2 was another key brand from here, as well as Stemansky of Yuri Gagarin fame, the first watch in space which was not sold to the public but given upon graduation from flight school. Now most watches at the second Moscow watch factory eventually got brought under the Slava brand which includes this pulsometer, some nice commemoration watches and this clone of the Accutron, the Slava Transistor. Now Chaikas were actually made in Chistopol, but Uglik would become their home, even being renamed to Chaika, with this being stimulated by the Chaika or Siegel call sign of Valentina Karashkova, the first female cosmonaut, with the focus being ladies watches. This included the smallest calibre made in the USSR, which was the 1200. Now Petra Dvoretz, now Peterhof, St. Petersburg, was originally focused on providing jewels, which was how it became linked to watches in 1932 as the first state precision jewel factory. After later getting its hands on an assembly work for other brands, it later developed a few of its own, such as the Leningrad, which is the other logo you can see on screen. But these would eventually be consolidated under the name Raketa, meaning rocket, an allusion to the ongoing space race in the 60s. They have a whole bunch of fun watches with some cool ones being this Copernicus model named after the Polish Nikolai Copernicus with another fun series being the so-called Big Zero models, their 24-hour movement watches and I can't resist showing this more avant-garde watch inspired by Kandinsky. A city we'll come back to is Minsk in modern-day Belarus, then part of the USSR as it's the centre of our digital watch adventures later but it's also the site of another important analogue brand established in the 50s, which is Luch. As well as some of the more standard Soviet looking fare, they later did some very cool looking quartz watches which I love, and they were acquired by the brand Frank Muller, and are actually still going today in Minsk, largely using Myota movements. Some of the remaining brands on this map are the Maslenikov watch factory, up top there with some fun looking Zim models, with the third state watch factory at Penza, heavily based on lip calibers, having, amongst others, the Zarya and Zvezda or Star brands. If we shift inland a bit, we come to the site where the second Moscow State Factory was moved to, before later moving back to Moscow. This site was in Chistopol, which would become one of the lasting sites of watchmaking in both the Soviet Union and later in Russia. 
Brands from there included the Karma, named after the river in Chistopol, the Saturn, and I really like this planet image on the logo, Mer, meaning peace, hence the dove motif, Drushba, or friendship, was a watch used to sell in Beijing, China, and Chistopol would of course be later renamed to Vostok, after Yuri Gagarin's spaceship in 1969, with brands such as the Common Dursky and later Amphibia, water-resistant dive watch in the 60s, the later very famous Scuba Dude version of this, being icons of the brand which is still going today. Now I've already mentioned the heritage of the Agat brand at Slatowsk with stopwatches, but another awesome example is the Slatowsk Vodalaz diver watch, which is a very large instrument used by Russian combat divers in the 60s, with Chelyabinsk being home base for the Molnir pocket watches and some Ural wristwatches. Right, now let's fully transition into electric and electronic watches. Now a key institution established in 1959 was NII Chazprom, which was the institute based in Moscow, which had previous iterations since 1940, more focused on the war effort. Now this group was tasked with developing both mechanical and electronic analog calibers for the whole Soviet watch industry. These will be parceled out to different brands, with the local manufacturers only being responsible for their exterior parts. Now the NII also did certification of chronometers and electric timekeepers used in space. Now the first electric watch in the Soviet Union was a Lutch, which was a modified form of the Hamilton 500, not made for public release. The Slava 114 electric being the commercial version that would make it onto the market in 1959. In 1961, the Integral Electronics Company in Minsk would be established, which will become important later. I'll mention in passing here the Seconda brand, which is now known as a UK brand, but was established in 1966 as the international name for exported Russian watches. When electronic watches, that is transistor-controlled watches, were available elsewhere, the USSR would leverage the Young Hands Electronic Calibre 600 Datacron to develop their own 3045 caliber, which would be used in the Lutch and Tigrov brands. There was also an attempt to do a version of the Accutron tuning fork style electromechanical watch that didn't fare too well, but there was a newer iteration of this that was made by the NII, with only 29 made, which was a watch which was worn by Krunov on the Soyuz 5 mission. Now the Pulsar Research Institute of the Ministry of Electronics produced an LED prototype watch in 1973, the famous story is that Leonid Brezhnev ordered a Hamilton Pulsar and enjoyed it so much that he required the Soviet one to be made, which would later become the Electronica One when it was launched commercially, a much sought after watch. Now in 1974, a digital quartz caliber was finalized at Integral Minsk the same year Casio was launching the Casiotron, with parts being sourced from all over, although there are credible sources that some examples were made first at the Zim factory, a quartz resonators from the Phonon company, with Uglik eventually taking over. Sarato produced the LCD displays and Battery Research Institute in Novobrisk produced the first button cells for LCDs and piezo electric alarms in what was Stalingrad. And Camatoni in Belarus produced the cases. This would enable the production of the caliber B602, which was the basis for a whole range of different Soviet digital watch brands. All of this would later be brought under the umbrella of Electronica, which is a subsidiary of Integral Minsk, required by a decree in 1978, which would make many, many millions of digital watches. I believe the Electronica 5 brand was being used from at least 1979, using the 30350 caliber 5202. It's claimed that they may actually be the first digital watch in space worn by Viktor Vasilyevich in the Soyuz 37 mission. 1980 would introduce some more basic both male and ladies watches with 81 having the B6206 and in 83 we have the 303A, 203B and 206B and in 84 I believe we see the first chronograph and countdown timer models with the 207 and 207M as well as alarm models with the hourly chime and alarm function with the 208 and 209. Cool picks from 1985 include the 29361, which includes this cool dot matrix display, and the 29367 Melody Alarm model. A couple of the fun last gasp of digital watches in the late 80s before the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1990 were the 52 and 51. 
some of my favourite watches from the 90s, which is when Belarus was becoming independent from the USSR, even though they were based on earlier modules, is this 53, commemorating the town of Suzdal in Russia, one of the so-called Golden Ring towns, and this very retro 58, as well as this 55B uh, from the other integral factory in Pinsk in southern Belarus. These were marked Kamatoni. I like this Anna Digi 59 and this 52B, Integral's answer to the Marlin or DW Casio series because of its water resistance. There were some first uses of Chinese components in these digital watches with this Electronics Corporation watch in 1993, which is a sign of things to come as production generally moved to China for these sorts of modules. On screen you'll see one of the later watches of Integral marked as Made in Belarus. With 2003, we see an interesting introduction, which is the Integral Polymaster, which included a Geiger counter in it. Well, what happened to all these brands over time? Well, by 2009, most production sites had shut down with closures including Uglik, Second Moscow Watch Factory, Chelyabinsk, St. Petersburg, Riga, Sadobsk, and Selenograd. The Polyop brand is still going under the auspices of Alexander Shropkov, manufactured in Germany. And Shropkov has his own brand too, which is heavily influenced by Russian history, for example, this Dostoevsky model, as well as the reference to Alexander Pushkin with the butterfly. Now, Vostok is still going strong with a thriving community, and as I said, Lutch is still going, uh, I believe, under the auspices of Frank Muller. A word on my amazing sources before I end. Some of the key ones have been the birth of Soviet watchmaking by Alan Garrett and electrifying the wristwatch, as well as Sergei Frolov's Soviet Electronics Museum, the Russian Watch Corner on the Safona Gastro Chrono website, electronica5.ru, and the Watches of USSR website, and many more that I've not been able to reference, but I have tried my best to do so throughout. And that's it for this deep dive into Soviet and post-Soviet era watches, with a particular focus on the electronic. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I would really appreciate if you were to subscribe, because most of my viewers don't. And if you um, would like to see some more of my videos, there's some on screen here, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.